What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, but I'm finally back and I just got some awesome pickups from the Southeast Game Exchange 2022 and that's what I'm going to talk about on today's episode. So roll that motherfucking intro. So I'm going to go over the uh, event guide. This is just to give you all an idea of if you would have went to this, what you could expect from it. Super cool event. One of my favorite conventions of the year, the Southeast Game Exchange in Greenville, South Carolina. They have uh, tons of stuff to do, not just buy video games. They have video game tournaments for games like Super Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, Halo, Dr. Mario, Pokemon Stadium. There's a ton of different things like that. Uh, they have panels if you actually want to hear what these YouTubers had to say about whatever they talk about. <laughs> Big channels attend these things and it really brings the, the fans out and the crowd out. People like Metal Jesus Rocks, John Riggs, Pat the NES Punk, Boogie. Uh, all these big channels like the Game Chasers, they even premiered and showed their movie for the first time, which was pretty cool. Uh, just tons of different special guests, and this is just some of them that attended this year. I guess if you're into Pokemon, she does the voice for Pokemon. Boogie, the guy who made the Mortal Kombat sign. Retro Gaming, Pandemic, uh, LGR, Metal Jesus Rocks. I mean, there's just a ton of them. I mean, you can all see them. John Riggs, Phoenix Resale, GameCube Galaxy, uh, Cheap Fine Gold Mines, Path the NES Punk, Retro Rick, The Game Chasers, Blips and Pips. Uh, super cool. Pac-Man Case, NES Complex, Gamer Aimer. There's just a ton there this year. So if you wanted to say something to him, you could. So yeah, that's the uh, event guide. So before I get into the games, I know I'm blabbering on, but I really wanted to talk about um, pricing in 2022 compared to 2005, 2010. Obviously, way more people collect now, and that's just part of it with uh, you know rising prices of these retro games. Um, so I've had to scale back a lot on collecting, and I had to scale back on quality. Uh, I, I've always tried to strive for top quality in some of the things that I want, but it's just getting harder and harder and harder to find boxes or cartridges that has little to no damage. It's just, it's almost impossible. So um, I've been having to lower my standards or I'm just not gonna be able to pick up anything. With that said, I picked up a couple games this year and uh, I'm gonna show them off. So the first game I got was Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega Genesis. It came out in the later part of 1989 but it had about three months until 1990, and they put out some absolute bangers, and this was one of them. I had the cartridge, but I never had it CIB. I wanted to pick it up. It was there for a reasonable price. I picked it up with the manual, cartridge in great shape. Thought it was a good deal. Like I said, it's just getting harder to find these. I only found like three copies of this game there, and this was by far the best one. It's just getting harder to find this stuff. Collecting is so crazy in 2022. The next four games I'm gonna talk about are all for the NES. It's weird because I already have these games, but I don't have them CIB. So I just wanted to go ahead and pick these up CIB. For one, they were in great condition. And like I said, finding things in tip top shape for a decent deal at conventions is very, very tough. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show them off now. The first game I got was Golgo 13, Top Secret Episode. I picked this game up because I do enjoy this game and it has that weird Konami silver that I really like. I know it's not made by Konami, it's made by Vic Tokai, but I just really like this box. It reminds me of the Metroid box. So uh, I really wanted to pick this up and the condition was there. Uh, I found a booth that had really good deals, but for some reason his uh, all his games were kind of set back, so you kind of had to really look for him. And uh, most people were just looking at his games that he had in the front. But he had a bunch of NES games sitting up behind him, and I guess people just didn't ask about them because they were there for a while. But yeah, Top Secret Episode, Goga 13. One of the coolest things about this game is that there's an actual sniper headshot, and it blows his freaking head off and blood squirts everywhere. So it's crazy that 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 made it past the NES censorship back in the day. But uh, yeah, Golga 13, and these are all pretty much complete. Uh, they might be missing an insert or two. 
on a couple of them, but they're all basic inserts that I could pick up uh, without a problem. So that's the first game I picked up. Second game I picked up was one that I've been looking for for a while because I played through the game on the cartridge that I had and it really wanted me to get it CIB. And that's The Magic of Zarazahard. Eh, I guess that's how you say it. The Magic of Zarazahard. Whatever. It's a great game. People say, oh, hidden gem this, hidden gem that. These things are 30 year old games from a system that was back in the 80s. Everybody knows all the hidden gems. So I'm not gonna say it's a hidden gem, but this game probably didn't sell very well when it came out, even though it's uh, extremely good. I think you all should try it. So uh, such a cool game and I wanted to pick it up because it was in, fa in fantastic shape. From the same seller, I got every one of these games from that same seller and you just don't find them like this anymore. I mean, when you're going to these conventions and looking for top quality, uh, it's so hard to find stuff in amazing condition. And this one has the map, the manual, and the insert in the middle there. So I'm glad I picked it up for a great price. And I got all these in a bundle deal. So that definitely saved me a couple bucks. Such a cool game. And I'm glad I got it to add to the collection. Next game we're going to talk about is a game that really I just picked up because I was bundling things. And I love the movie and I like the NES game, but... It was there and in great shape, so I picked it up. And that's Goonies 2. Goonies 2 is a fun game. I love, uh, like I said, that old Konami Silver always just, it just catches my eye. So I went ahead and picked this up also. Pretty good shape. There's a little ding right at the top when they would try to open these back in the day. They would kind of bend that out. Not bad at all. It's got the manual and the poster. So uh, super cool. Goonies 2. And everybody's like, well, where's Goonies 1? Oh, there wasn't a Goonies 1 for the NES, which was just weird that they would name it Goonies 2, but whatever. Uh, in my opinion, this game is playable. It's pretty fun. I think you all should give it a shot. I like it. I mean, I picked it up, so. And there's uh, one last game that I got, and this was kind of crazy because I've been looking for this game probably for a couple years now, and the condition is just never there. For some reason, you know, there's just damage on every one of these that I see. So this was a situation where I either had to just bite the bullet and buy it, even though there was a little bit of damage. And that is the Classic Series Metroid. I've been wanting this box for a long time. Man, there was just, there, there's so few of these that I see at conventions. So when I do see it, it's ex it just catches my eye immediately. Uh, but such a good game. It's basically the same game as the original Metroid, just a different box. But I love this box, so I had to have it and I wanted to add it to the collection. But uh, there's one little tidbit of damage on this. I mean, it's so clean. But if you look right here, there's a little dent in the box. And that's just unfortunate. But like I said, you can't, find these anymore man they're just crazy old and it's just hard to not dent cardboard for 30 years so uh yeah i had to pick it up for the collection that's what exactly what i did it comes with the manual uh it's missing the insert but it's a pretty basic insert so i'll be adding that to it later and uh yeah that's one of the most uh, excited pickups that I've had in a while because I couldn't believe it was there. Uh, I only seen two of them and the other one was in pretty good shape too but not as good as this one and the other one had some fading on this or on the side of the box which really sucked. Well that's all five of my game pickups from the convention but before I go I got one last thing that I want to show you that I picked up and uh, I've been wanting it for a while. I just been putting it off and this is the Pat Contry Ultimate guide to the Super Nintendo. He did an NES one also, and I have that one, but I kind of held off on the Super Nintendo one. Uh, but these, I'm not like getting paid to talk about this book at all. This thing is super cool, man. It just talks about, and he basically talks about and reviews every game for the Super Nintendo. I mean, every single game in the entire library. So, uh, such a cool thing. If you like reading stuff about retro video games, I recommend this. I, I enjoy that type of stuff, so I picked it up for the collection. But I'm always curious to see what, uh, you know, what how many stars he gives the games out of five. And mostly all the ratings in this book are very accurate. There's a couple that kind of are like, well, I think that game's a little bit better. I think that game's a little bit worse. But basically, it's just his opinion. And he didn't do all the reviews. I think he had a couple people help him. But it's still pretty cool to see a book all in one that you can just 
flip through and get a basic idea on a game if you're looking to play it or purchase it. But one of the main reasons I picked the book up is because I wanted to see if he gave Super Mario World five stars. And spoiler alert, he did. And that's exactly how many stars this game should have. Hell, let's be honest, it should have six. So uh, not many games he gave five stars to, but Super Mario World was one of them, and, and it's extremely deserving of the five star rating. So uh, it's such a cool book, and there's like little things at the end that talk about different stuff from the Super Nintendo's lifespan, different peripherals, unreleased games. That was a pretty cool section. There was a ton of games that I never got released. Talks about the Super Disk system that didn't happen. Just all kinds of really cool, like, literature and if you were a backer or a kickstarter you got your name in the book so uh pretty cool book but uh yeah there you go and there's some cool stuff on the back right there so uh there you go that's all my pickups hopefully you guys enjoyed it and uh hopefully it wasn't too long so until next time keep on reminiscing y'all well there you go that's all my pickups from the southeast game exchange 2022 in greenville south carolina if you ever get a chance to go to this convention, uh, don't pass it up. I highly recommend it. Tons of good fun, tons of awesome video games, tons of awesome friends and uh, people to meet in the retro gaming community. Just an overall fantastic experience. If you guys have any memories of the games I talked about today, or just any memories in general of retro video games, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, Keep on reminiscing, y'all. What's going on, y'all? I just want to take a short moment to talk about my buddy, Sean. He sells vintage G.I. Joe and other vintage figures at the conventions around here. And I think you should uh, get a hold of him if you're looking to buy some figures. Uh, all 100% complete, all authentic weapons, file cards, and figures. No reproduction stuff here. Uh, he's super affordable, insane quality, and I've been buying from him for years now and uh i mean i've gotten almost all my figures from him so uh if you guys want to get a hold of him he doesn't have any social media reach out to me and i can get you in touch with him because these things are only getting more and more expensive so if you're wanting to build your awesome gi joe collection make sure you hit me up and i'll get you in touch take it easy y'all